Hey everyone, Jay from Slam Academy talking about Live 11. In this video, I'm going to talk about new functions in the MIDI editor. There's a whole bunch of new things we can do, and I'm just going to try to fly through as many of them as I can in this short video. Okay, so let's make a new clip and let's just make a, I don't know, C minor triad. I'm just going to repeat that a whole bunch of times. With our velocity, we've got one cool new thing that I really like is just randomized velocity. So we can select all, randomized velocity, boom. Now that's really cool. I think that creates a, a can create a really cool texture, but we can keep that texture changing and morphing actually a lot more by using some of the probability tools that we have now. So check this out. If I go to, let's go to this note, for example. In fact, let's just simplify this and take it down to a single note. We'll go back to that in just a minute. So if I look at this note and say, this is the velocity, what I can actually do now is command, click and drag on this velocity to make a velocity range. That's gonna make a probability that it's going to hit a velocity somewhere in that range, right? So if I do that on all of these, and I just make kind of a big amount of probability, now it's going to be evolving and changing every pass through. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to my texture and put this E flat back in just cause I'm really liking this sound. And I'm gonna select all of those and let's just randomize the velocity and give them a deviant range, a range that they can deviate from that velocity. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this G to make this nice little triad. So let's take that randomize velocity and give them a deviant range. Okay, let's see what we have now. Okay, great. A nice texture just from adding a couple notes, default operator patch, and adding a lot of randomized velocity with a range for deviation. Now, there's even more deviation I could do by playing around with the new probability controls. If I hit this toggle down here, I'm gonna get some controls for probability. So let me pull that a little bit bigger and take a look at that. What I can do here is adjust the probability that the note is gonna happen at all, right? And I can do this for each note. So if I select all the notes and randomize probability, now it's all over the place, right? So let's hear what that did. So that's interesting, but it's a little thin for my taste. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select kind of everything, you know, around under 50 or so and push those up and they're gonna proportionally move up. So I just wanna get everything to be more likely to happen to kind of thicken the texture a little bit. Let's hear it now. Cool, now it's a really nice texture. Imagine using something that, like this on your hi-hats or something like that, right? It's obviously um, a great tool for that. Now, let's go back to this little C minor chord for a second here. Let me talk to the theory dorks just for a second here. You know, as I know, that this is not really a C minor triad, right? Um, this is some kind of augmented two chord or something like that, uh, because the way we spell notes matters. There's no D sharp in a C minor triad. That doesn't make any sense. There's an E flat in a C minor triad. That's how it works. Spelling is important. But Ableton has been listening to us. Ableton has been listening to the theory dorks of the world. And check this out. I'm going to control click on the keyboard here. Boom, show it in flats. This is like the sky opening up. When we were in the initial Live 11 top secret demo and they showed that I almost fell off my chair. We can even show sharps and flats where we see both. Now that brings us 
to another cool new feature that is kind of taken from the push too, and that's the ability to show the scale. So let me go back to showing sharps, and I can go over here and lay a scale down on my MIDI grid, right? So if I say scale C minor, we can see here that uh, we have just kind of the outline in orange here of the C minor scale. And critical, uh, they even thought this through enough to change to favoring flats when they do that because that's what you would do in a C minor scale, right? Like it's flats. So even though I set it to sharps, when I turn on the scale, it changes it to flats because that's correct. Okay, enough theory nerding. So we can show our scale here uh, for whatever scale we're in. It doesn't change our notes. It just, uh, we can still do chromatic things outside of the scale unless uh, we click this little scale button up here. This is gonna be fold to scale. So this is gonna fold our track uh, and only show us notes in the scale, getting rid of any of the chromatic notes. Cool, right? So I can unfold it to go back to seeing the chromatic notes. Now there's another new thing here, and that is multi-clip editing. You'll remember that in Live 10, they introduced the ability to look at multiple clips at once. Now we have the ability to edit multiple clips at once. So if I go here and select both of these MIDI clips, I can see both of them here and I can easily edit both of them without switching over between them. All clips selected, all the notes are editable, no matter what clip they're in. Now, if you're like, whoa, that's scary, we do have this focus button here, which you can toggle with the uh, N key. And what focus is gonna do is, it's gonna basically take us back to the way it worked in Live 10. So now I can only edit one clip at a time, the clip that I'm focused on, right? If I turn focus off, I can edit any note from any clip. So that is a few of the features in the new MIDI editing functions in Live 11.